What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Today I'm hosting a fight, the Intel Core i9-9900K versus the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X. But this is not something that you have already seen around, since I'm going to test both at 5 GHz. The 9900K at 5 GHz is nothing special, but to take the 3800X, well, that is quite extreme. I had to use a cascade phase change to lower the CPU temperature at around negative 100 degrees, 96 to be exact, to be able to obtain a 5 GHz all core stable. Keep in mind that with the cold, the performance of the IMC tends to degrade a bit, but after the benchmark, I'm going to explain you something. Now you're going to see various tests with two different GPU and two different memory kit. I used an RTX 2080 at default that was a bit limited in some situation and an RTX 2080 Ti with the power limit at the maximum to give the CPU a bit of breadth. Regarding the memory, I used as base a kit of G-Skill Trident Z RGB set to 3733 MHz and C14 with manual sub-timings for both of the platform. Plus, with the Zen 2, you will see a Corsair Vengeance LPX 3200 MHz C15 set at the default XMP profile. This is useful to show you the impact of the fabric clock and uh, when the memory are left to XMP, so with a default uh, and automatic uh, subtiming profile. But now, let's start the battle! I have four slides left, but I want to stop you here for a moment. As you may notice, uh, the memory configuration plays a big role in the performance. Zen 2 have a massive amount of L3 cache, and in some situations, like productivity, the gain is huge. Also in gaming, is a good improvement over the previous generation, but it's not enough. The cache needs to receive the data from the memories, and uh, everything goes through the Infinity Fabric, the actual bottleneck of this architecture, and that is why that even at the same frequency, Zen 2 can't keep up uh, with the Intel counterpart. But now, let's see this. Even pushing the frequency to the extreme, the gain over the CPU at default, in this case, is zero. As I told you, the bottleneck is not the frequency. And that is why manually overclocking a Zen 2 isn't a great idea for gaming. If you wonder why the GPU minimum is lower with the 3800X at 5 GHz, is most probably for the cold. As I told you before, with sub-zero temperature, the Infinity Fabric lose a bit. Here we have some sort of scaling, but 9 FPS for 600 MHz of frequency isn't a good result. Here, the FPS gain is free. Not so impressive either. Keep in mind that this is an average of three or more rounds, and the variance was minimal. More or less, we have the same result for World of Warcraft, that is one of the most CPU-demanding game around. But uh, here, at least, uh, the bigger L3 cache is very important to get nice lows. I bet that for you, this result uh, was uh, quite unexpected. But uh, I knew that more or less uh, we will have uh, this situation. And that is why that every video I make about Zen 2, I never get too tired to tell you that it's important to max out the Infinity Fabric clock. I'm going to make uh, more content about fabric speed and memory tuning with Zen 2, because it's very important, as you have seen. I have already some material, I'm preparing a performance tuning guide that I will publish probably next week. 
As always, I hope that I gave you some data to discuss, and if you want to reach out, you can find me on my Discord server or in Twitch that I recently started streaming my session of testing and benchmarking. And uh, of course, you can leave a comment down below. And now you know what to do. Like the video if you like it, uh, subscribe if you want to see more, and see you the next one. <laughs>